first thing that comes to mind about the bombing is those kids. Um, not to shortchange anybody else, but it's the kids. Um, that daycare, um, the picture that's all over the world. Um, that's what that's what I think of. On the day of the bombing, we were just doing our normal station routine on a Wednesday morning. I always remember it was a Wednesday. Each day of the week, we had if you worked a certain day, you had certain responsibilities at the station. I just remember there were some guys out mowing the yard because that was yard day. We were standing around the kitchen discussing what we were going to go to the store and have for breakfast. We always left for the store at 9 o'clock. We felt the blast. The station rattled, the windows rattled. Looked back to the south, downtown, saw the large plume of smoke, and we what we call self-dispatched. We didn't wait for the tone to go off or orders to come from dispatch. We got an order over the radio from our chief to go down to the building, the actual Murrah building, assist the police department with getting a lady out of the basement. So we did that and we were going around to the south side of the building. We'd gotten another assignment. And as we were going around the south side of the building, a gentleman came out of, I really don't know where he came out of, and he said, I have a critical infant. And I don't know, instead of pointing to the ambulance or trying to find him somebody. My mom says that God's hand was in it, and I just said, here, I'll take her. And he handed me Bailey. I checked her for signs of life. I didn't find any. Looked across the street and saw a ambulance over there. Told the paramedic that I had a critical infant. And the photo, when if you see the whole picture, is I'm standing there looking down at Bailey. There's a paramedic on his knees spreading a blanket out on the ground. And that maybe took like a minute, so maybe two minutes tops that I was holding Bailey. I felt bad for Erin Allman, the mother, because I felt like the photo put her in an uncomfortable position because now she has to face it every day and see it on every news story, every magazine, every newspaper. People are approaching her in the store. And then I felt a lot of guilt for being the last one to hold her child. She didn't get to hold Bailey again. She got to identify her, but then she didn't get to hold her because it sounds weird, and I hate to put her in that category, but she was considered evidence of the bombing, so she couldn't even hold her child again. Even though I, I wasn't responsible for it, and the fact you know, I didn't like pose for a picture, my mind was convincing me that if you hadn't been in the photo, she wouldn't be going what she's going through. Yes, Beatty still would have been deceased, but Erin wouldn't be getting all the attention she was getting. So those were a lot of the issues I was dealing with. But to everybody else, I was just the same, because I was just sucking it up and just doing my job because we just didn't talk about things like that. The bombing was in 1995. It was actually 10 years, 2005, was the time period to where I just went along about my business like everything was fine. Weird thing happened. We were putting a pool in the backyard. I was busting out concrete and it started raining. And of course, the night of the bombing, it rained. We had all that wet concrete dust. I smelt the wet concrete dust at my house. And in my mind, I just kind of said, God, it smells just like the day of the bombing. And that's when I noticed that I kind of started isolating myself and pulling myself away from my family a little bit. There's certain things that remind you, so it's just kind of weird, but I really can't drink Ozarka water. When we were down there and we took a break, they had bottles of Ozarka water. And it's just the taste of that with the smell of you know, decomposition or death. And I can do that today. I can take a drink of Ozarka water and it's gonna, it just triggers that. Currently, I'm, um, I work with some other gentlemen and I travel around the country speaking to first responders about the effects, signs, symptoms, PTSD, really not in a, in a doctor standpoint, but as a first responder, just kind of letting them know they're not alone if they do have these feelings, that it's okay. We're trying to break the stigma of people reaching out for help with PTSD. The suicide rate among police officers is skyrocketing. 2017, more firefighters died by suicide than died in the line of duty. Both are unacceptable, but dying by suicide more than line of duty is really unacceptable. So that just kind of gave me the push I need when these guys called. I feel like it's all coming kind of full circle now. I always question why the photo, you know, resented it for a long time, but now that I'm doing all this, I kind of see it coming full circle, and I guess my mom was right. There was a reason. So.